What's up guys? It's David Shepard here on the Humble Hotshot YouTube channel and today we're going to do a full walk around detail video of my lightweight low overhead little hotshot rig. So I'm going to explain why I went this particular route, kind of an unconventional setup for hot shotting. And I'm going to show you the truck, I'm going to show you the trailer, and basically tell you why I chose this setup. So let's get right into it. Uh, let's go over the trailer first. This is a brand new unit. The truck clearly is not. We'll get into why I'm running the older truck, but the trailer is a 2021 PJ. It's a 25 foot gooseneck uh, split deck combo, meaning it's got eight feet of stationary deck and then 17 feet of tilt deck in the back so we'll show you the tilt it's just a gravity tilt um, so no hydraulics or anything all you do is take your safety pin out push this oh, it takes a little effort push this lever up and then the deck will start to tilt all on its own just by gravity there is a hydraulic ram in there um, not powered hydraulic but just hydraulic for dampening to give you that nice controlled open and close and you can actually control that um, with this valve you can speed up or slow down or fully close uh, the proportioning valve there so there's a tilt assembly um, since just the last 17 feet of deck tilt it's really awesome for loading cars and equipment it's a nice low load angle it's got the knife edge in the back and this one has 82 inches between the fenders so most cars trucks unless they got really wide wheels or something like that on them you could load them right on there and for anything wider excuse me you can remove these fenders it's just a couple of bolts on each side unplug your fender lights and you can remove the fenders and just drive right over the trailer tires so I Basically, could not decide if I want to haul cars, haul freight. I see a lot of partials on the load boards, and at the same time, I'm a big car guy. I like hauling cars, and I love the fact that when you're hauling cars, you're just you're in control of the load and the unload. You're never waiting for a shipper or receiver to load or unload you. You can get that car on and off the trailer yourself. So I chose this setup, a split deck combo, to be able to do both. Um, I can haul two small cars, only if they're really small, uh, but really just one car and freight or 25 feet of freight. Now, that being said, this is not a deck over trailer, obviously. So you've got these fenders in the way. Again, they are removable. Um, but that, as I see it, is going to be the biggest limiting factor of my setup. And I knew that going in. And I just decided that's something that I'm personally willing to give up in order to have a tilt deck with an awesome loading angle for low cars. And I never have to fuss with ramps. I don't have to strap them down. I don't have to worry about a customer's car coming off the ramps or something like that. So I love the tilt deck and I was willing to sacrifice not having a deck over. So some shippers might not be real pleased about that. You know, you could clearly load pallets and forklift load anything on or off the stationary deck here. And then the front half of this deck. But some shippers might not be thrilled about the fact that you've got to work over or around these fenders to get loaded. Now that being said, I've got lots of straps and slings. You could always lower things down in between the fenders. Or you could do the old pallet slide. And if it's all palletized free, you could put one pallet here and then get the next one in line, push it forward, and then work it that way. So that's something I was willing to sacrifice. I understand that will be a bit of a limiting factor, but again, that's something I was willing to give up in order to uh, just have the option to haul equipment, cars, as well as freight, and not have to mess with ramps. So that's the PJ trailer. Um, I don't know the exact model number on this one. It might be on here, but I'm sure if you look it up, the PJ Gravity Tilts, um, let's see, it is a 15,680 GVW, and I did not have them derate this, um, because I just didn't need to with the GVW in my truck, I'm still under 26,000 for a non-CDL hotshot setup, so there you go, it's, uh, 
tandem single with 7,000 pound axles. And I do also know that PJ is not the lightest trailer on the market. A comparable Big Tex would be uh, a little bit lighter, not terribly substantial, but um, my experience with trailers has been they all suck, to be quite candid. Um, they're all built like crap. Uh, the paint seems to fail on all of them, the hardware, the welds, and just the general construction of them is never that good. So the best look I've had is with PJ as far as quality, and you sacrifice a little bit of light weightness in order to achieve that, but personally, I'd rather have a trailer that lasts and I'll sacrifice a little bit of that lightness to gain that. So, um, that's the trailer. Those are the main features, all LED lights, of course, and full rub rail, except where the fenders are. And then you've also got D-ring tie downs on the tilt deck as well. So let's go ahead and climb up here where we could tilt this thing back down slowly coming down there PJ's also uh, talking about paint quality they are all powder coated most trailers you look at um, most of them have cheap paint to be honest um, you'll see some the Kaufman's and others that are advertised as automotive quality paint meaning they're dual stage they have a oh, excuse me while I lock this uh, dual stage meaning they're primed uh, with one coat and then they have a finished coat and or they're, they're primed they're painted and then they have a clear coat on top of that so that's better than just a single st stage spray and pray uh, but not nearly as good as the powder coat on a PJ so that's the trailer in a nutshell and then we'll go over the truck here now this uh, really the biggest reason why I'm running this truck, the 2003 Dodge Ram 5.9 Cummins with an automatic, is simply because I already owned it. Um, looked at a lot of different trucks, I was going to pull the trigger on buying a dually, and I just read more and more about the problems they were having, and mostly emissions related, some stuff with the newer VGT turbos. I've had a lot of experience with the Cummins platform, I wanted to stay with that, but I just could not bring myself to buy a new truck and potentially have to deal with more problems than the truck I already owned may or may not have. So that's why I decided to stay with the 2003. No DEF, of course, uh, no EGR, no emissions equipment at all on this truck, and it gets 21 miles per gallon. Even towing the trailer when I'm empty deadhead miles, I could get 17 miles per gallon in a gooseneck trailer that weighs about 4,500 pounds empty. Um, so, if you're concerned about reliability, this is a high mileage truck. It is an older truck, but no VGT turbo to worry about, no EGR equipment, better fuel mileage, and you're not buying depth on the road. So, for me, that was enough to say I'll stick with this truck. I do all my own maintenance, and I just figured if something happens, I'll deal with it then. I could run this truck and with the high miles potentially have some maintenance and some repairs to do or I could take out a loan or spend a bunch of money on a brand new truck and potentially have the same problems in addition to that you get a brand new truck and you have a warranty that's that's the biggest benefit of getting a new truck right well at the same time you're at the mercy of the dealership that's the only place you could go for repairs you're stuck with them and if they say we'll get to you in five weeks you just got to deal with it right so figured I'm gonna run this truck if I have any problems I will deal with it myself on my own time frame and kind of on my own terms so um, the truck does have 250,000 miles um, and basically went through it all done my regular maintenance um, changed all the fluids and things like that in addition to that what I did have to invest in was a gooseneck hitch of course you can see the old Heide Goose is bolted up. Of course, we got the gooseneck hitch, and I installed that myself. Not too bad. I also added some rear airbags. You can see um, airbags on each side, and you could regulate the pressure depending on your load. Ran the Schrader valves out the back here, so you just fill them up with whatever amount of pressure you want depending on the load you have and 
that'll help compensate for your tongue weight. Um, in addition to the airbags, truck's got a new heavy duty transmission, heavy duty torque converter, heavy duty bands, otherwise basically just a stock rebuild on the original 48 transmission. Uh, not the best, of course. I would love if this truck was a manual, and that probably will prove to be a weak point, but at least I'm starting with a fresh rebuild with some heavy duty components. And aside from that, truck is pretty much bone stock. I do have a fast titanium lift pump. That's another weak point on these trucks. So for the amount of miles I'm gonna do, the serviceability of the filters, as well as just not having to worry about a stock lift pump failure, went ahead and did that as well. But otherwise, engine, uh, drivetrain is all stock, 2003 5.9 Cummins 24 valve. So that's the rig, that's my setup. I think uh, it's a pretty humble one, considering a lot of guys running brand new dualies and 40 foot tandem dual trailers. But at the same time, I wanna keep, keep things light, keep things low overhead truck and trailer are both completely paid off so don't have to worry about making those payments just got to worry about your fuel and insurance no if to no irp staying under twenty six thousand. so that's my whole plan with this deal stay light keep it simple and just roll with that um about simplicity this truck you know it's still something i could work on i'm kind of your average backyard mechanic I've got experience with different things, including diesels. And without the variable vane turbo and without um, all that new emissions equipment and the super high pressure fuel system the trucks are running nowadays, I can still work on this truck myself, which is awesome. So that's my plan, guys. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel, follow along, see if this truck will last, see if this trailer setup will work for hot shotting, and uh, see what we come up with. Um, Lastly, I do want to share a Bible verse with you guys. I will be sharing scriptures on this channel. The Lord God is the greatest blessing in my life. and He's honestly the source of all life and energy. And if there's anything good that I do in my life, it's only because of him. So today I want to share a um, passage from Isaiah. I forget the exact verse, but it says, When you go through waters, I will be with you. When you pass through rivers, they will not overtake you. Excuse me, we got a we got a little Ford F1000 going by with some raspy exhaust. <laughs> um, but when you go through waters, they will not overtake you. I will be with you. When you pass through rivers, they will not overtake you. When you walk through fire, it shall not consume you, and you will not be burned out. So I hope that encourages you guys. Maybe I'll have problems on the road with this. I know I'm going to... Uh, endure a lot of struggles but i will always remember that the lord is with me no matter what happens and i hope that encourages you guys as well so i praise god for the opportunity the blessing of uh just being born and raised in this country where i have the freedom to open a business and pursue my dreams so hope this is, encourages you guys and uh please follow along see what happens and i'll be giving you updates along the way and we will see you on the next one. Subscribe to the channel for updates. I'll show you what I'm hauling, what works, what doesn't work, and we'll go from there. God bless. Thank you, guys.